What's up, Panther Nation? Bill Mack here with another edition of the Panther Proud. Yes, I am here with your Week 6 preview matchup between the Carolina Panthers going all the way across country to play victim, <laughs> I guess to say the most, uh, against the, the Super Bowl champions of the previous year, the LA Rams and SoFi Stadium. Uh, this is a lot to d preview here, folks, for you uh, uh, today. Thanks once again for joining me in this video. As always, like, share, and subscribe the video uh, to the channel as well. Share the videos if you can. Give me a thumbs up, comments, any kind of comments, opinions, anything. Drop them in the comment box, and I will be sure to get them. So we are talking here to the pre my preview notes here about the Panthers. Uh, the Carolina Panthers will play... Their first game under the interim head coach, Steve Wilkes, of course. Uh, this will be their first game on the road since week two. They are going to face the, like I said, the uh, Los Angeles Rams, who are two and three at SoFi Stadium Sunday at 4.05. So this is a late game for us, Panther Nation, going all the way for the third straight 4.05 game. There's a lot to unpack here. As we stated, the interim head coach, uh, Steve Wilkes, of course, uh, between last video and this one, uh, Carolina Panthers head coach Matt Rule was let go, and Steve Wilkes was promoted up to interim head coach. This will be his first. They've had a lot going on here, and we'll kind of unbuckle that. Let's get a little bit here with it. Of course, the Panthers are 13-9 all-time versus the Rams. Carolina is, of course, 7-4 and four when they face them on the road. However, this will be their first time playing them in SoFi Stadium. Of course, back in 2019 was the last time the Panthers played the Rams, and they lost a nail-biter 30-27. to Now, Panthers coming into this, there is a lot to digest here. Let's get up with the injury report. Who is here? Who is out? Who is not going to play? Who will play is the question of today. So now, as far as the inactives for today's game, we have quarterback Baker Mayfield, of course, cornerback J.C. Horn, who was hurting with a hip, of course, from last week, which is not a good thing. Of course, uh, wide receiver LaVisca Chanel, of course, still out of hamstring. Frankie Luvu, game time decision, but it looks like he is going to be out for this game today, which that means the Panthers are missing another powerful piece of that defensive uh, decent defensive set, of course. Defensive lineman Davion Nixon. Offensive lineman Cade Mays. And, of course, defensive end Amare Barno. So, these are out. We have a few of them. Also, Stanley Thomas Oliver will be out. Of course, we know that Chris, uh, that C.J. Henderson, uh, Dante Jackson, Cam Irvin were all questionable uh, for today's game. So, this will be an issue Um as the Panthers will not be in full force yet again with this lineup. So, how are we going to do it? I mean, we're already playing. I mean, our defense is decent, but our it, it, it's like these pieces we need. You know, Chin is still out. He's got three more weeks to go at the least um, on the on the um, injured reserve list. Uh, Luvu is out yet a second game. You know, uh, you know these other guys. Uh, are going to be in here. We're going to have to wait and see what happens uh, with this. Of course, match the, the Rams themselves. They are looking nothing like what they were last year, as they are two and three, as stated. Their offense is pretty much parallel with the Panthers. The the, the Rams team is almost parallel with the Panthers team in that their defenses are pretty good, but their offenses just suck. Their offenses are, are, are just not getting it together. Of course, the Panthers going through, and they will be starting for the first time um, this year, P.J. Walker. He is the fourth-listed quarterback for the Panthers, of course. I said Baker Mayfield was inactive for this game. Uh, he looked to be a practice a little bit his some on Friday and Saturday without the boot. He was in a boot last week. And it looks that P.J. will be getting a start today. Now, who would have thought P.J. Walker would be getting a start today? Considering at the beginning of the season, he seemed like an afterthought after the draft because the Panthers picked up Matt Corral. So, we're going to have three quarterbacks. So, we're going to have Baker. And we're going to have Sam Darnold. And then we're also going to have the rookie 
uh, Matt Corral. Now it looks like P.J. is the one that actually has avoided injury and actually is going to end up being the one to start today. P.J. has done decent. He is not your normal backup quarterbacks, as we've seen him going through quite a bit here for Panther Nation. It's, it's just that there's not really a whole lot of hope. I mean, P.J. can get you some yards, but P.J. has a problem, turnover problem when it comes to the red zone. As once he gets you to the red zone, he'll make sure that you don't get into the end zone. He'll throw a pick there into it. So we're going to have to see how does this offensive line, which they have been holding together. They have been the only unit through five weeks that have played every single person uh, that has been on their line is the same continuous offensive line in the NFL. Now, who would have thought that being the case looking at last year? But that together brings some continuity with the team. That brings some uh, closeness, some chemistry. So we hope. And last week, let's give it up. Iki Aquanu, my boy from NC State, got a 92.1 P, uh, rating, PFF rating at guard against San Francisco last week. Got a 92. Good job. Iki Aquana, glad my boy from State done a great job. Got that good grade last week. Can Iki keep it up? Now, he will have a formidable test this week. We will get into that with the matchups today. Now, a question is, Bill, you think, well, what were the Panthers, what did they have to do? This is where we get into the segment. What did the Panthers have to do to get a win against the Rams? Well, I have come up with four important thing or maybe five important steps which i think don't happen let's go over them together so number one what would have what the panthers must do to get a win against the la rams well first and foremost the offense needs to step up with pj walker under center the panthers offense will be trying to do something that's going to be really rough and 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 an un you know unheard of with the kind of things they're having to go on without the quarterback without with a new a new quarterback in which is really a four-string quarterback. We've got a head coach in who has had, uh, you know, has been part of the defensive set and been a defensive coach. Which uh, Steve uh, Steve Wilkes does have the the support of the Panthers uh, locker room. Now they have to. Now here's what's going on. The um the they rank last. The Panthers rank last in the NFL in total offense and on third downs, as we've seen there. At the league and at the bottom of the league in passing offense, which is 28 yards per play, 28th big plays, 29th. Now, with all that great offense passing wise, how is the defense? How is um, how is the D offense going to look when it comes to rushing the ball? Well, trying to run the ball this week, this year hasn't been as good and as consistent as it has been over the past few seasons. Of course, this will be a stout test for the Panthers against the Rams as the Rams are 11th ranked against the run with their defense, and they have the 4th ranked uh, red zone defense, and they have limited plays, which is second tied in that category so that's going to be a tall order that's why i said the offense has to step up they have to give pj enough time to get the ball pj has to try to avoid making turnovers avoid getting uh throwing interceptions avoid coughing up the ball he's gonna to have to learn to move around which he does have some um he, had, he does have a good pair of legs on him he does have some capability so they're gonna to have to do that in order for uh, to try to move around with that defense. And like I said, they've got up in some holes. That has been one of the Achilles heels of the Panthers has been running the ball, creating the spots, opening up for Christian to get through or whoever that running back may be because the Rams are a top 11 ranked team with that. So we know the offense has a step up. Now, part number two, what would the Panthers must do to get a win against the Rams? The Panthers' defense has to keep Stafford on bounce. And like I said, Stafford is not the Stafford he was last year. The Rams are last in the league in big plays, yards per play, rushing offense, and sacks. But, of course, it's it's one of the problems which we see a lot of main problems. When you have that, a lot of times it's something's going on with that offensive line. That's been the problem is the offensive line by – uh, doing that, and that, of course, that, that, what does that mean? Well, it means that they can't give the quarterback time enough to make big plays. He can't get good, get deep passes. The rushing attack won't work because they can't open the 
create the lines and holes for the running back to go through uh, for that to happen in sacks. Well, if they're not continuity together and they're not holding the uh, able to stay in their position, then the quarterback will get sacked. We've known this too well, Panther Nation. We've been going through this the last three seasons as the Panthers' the offensive line has. We've tried to make it together. We got Icky in the, in the draft. We've gotten some other free agents to come in to try to contribute to help sure up that line. We still have to get the rushing down pat um, and that rushing line. But we've got to. The thing is, we've got to get some turnovers here. We got to get some takeaways. We don't pressure the quarterback enough to get enough sacks on them. We also don't get enough to get interceptions. I mean, how many times this year have we seen Panther Nation? Uh, the Panthers get the balls gifted right in the uh, defensive player's hands only for him to drop it, take his eyes off the ball before he's got a chance to come down with it. We've seen this numerous, numerous times. So the defense has to keep Stafford. They've got to apply pressure to him. They've got to get the run game shut down. They've got to shut down this offense who isn't really much better than they are. Really, I mean, it's going to be the way it looks, the battle of two defenses, and who can maybe it's a, it's a one one play can over, can really cause to the, the um can cause the end of the game, can cause the be the main catalyst for the, the win here. I mean, a strip sack, a fumble up and scoop and run for a touchdown, a pick six. These things can happen with this team. I look this to be a very low-scoring game. Of course, this is right at the Panthers' alley. As what does their record have been with rule previously? What one in twenty-seven when the defense has scored seven, offense has scored seventeen points of the other team. We've not been able to do it. Can the Panthers create on third downs? Can they continue? And this is what we seem like we're we're in Groundhog Day all over again, where we're continuously seeing. Them not create on third down, the defense getting wore out, and the defense by the time that the lower part of the third quarter, early part of the fourth, they're already gassed out because they've been on the field so long. So, we've got to try to do that. So, Bill, number three, what must the Panthers do to get a win against the Rams? Well, as I stated in the injury report, they've got to overcome multiple injuries to the secondary. Now, this is where we got to do it as well. Cooper Cup is the dude for them. He is their leading dude. They, this secondary will get torched if they don't find some way to contain Cooper Cup here. The, of course, the Panthers, like I said, they uh, had three cornerbacks listed as questionable on Friday's final injury report with Tom, uh, Stanley Thomas Oliver and J.C. Horn, you know, are not going to be in the game at all. Dante, of course, seems to be like he may be playing um, – Xavier, uh, Xavier Woods for, uh, battling back. Luva, of course, we saw will be out. Henderson is questionable. Could play again, which Henderson is another story in his own, which would have to be in a video of his own. I don't know what Henry's, uh, Henderson is doing. I don't know. Uh, I mean, trading picks for, I mean, this is this is that rule error. These are the picks and stuff and trades and stuff that fit or even him, the GM, has been a part of that have not worked out. We've got to step up. We've got injuries. It's just next man up. It's like I said last week. You've got a next man up. you got to step up. you got to try to keep the, keep the ball in front of him. Don't let, the, don't let Cooper Cup run all over you because that's what he does. Won the Triple Crown last year as a receiver. And that leads me into, uh, what point is it? Point number four? Yeah, point number four. Step up to the challenge against Cooper Cup on offense and De Aaron Darnold on e defense. Now, I haven't said De Aaron Darnold yet because I was going to wait till we got to this part because these are your two stars, one on offense, one on defense. This Panther, Panther team has to keep in check. As, as I stated with Cooper Cup, he ranks first of all NFL receivers in touches, scrimmage yards, and scrimmage touchdowns. He's got 49 catches for 527 yards, averaging 10 yards a catch with four uh, touchdown receiving catches already. Now, let's look at Dan Arnold, uh, Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald has been a nightmare for years. The dude's a Hall of Famer certified. The man is going to get in there. He's going to be in this week, and who is he lined up against? Lo and behold, my boy Icky. Icky, Icky, Icky. Is this going to be a game like you did the other week, my friend, when Miles Garrett just went blue by you? I mean, there's going to be moves you hadn't seen. I hope you've had enough of practice. I hope you've tried to get a little extra practice in this week because Aaron, Don Aaron Donald is a beast of his own. Now, Aaron Donald, of course, 
he is all to a good start this year so far through his through five games. He has got four sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble, a fumble recovery. So these are the two guys, Panther Nation, that we're going to have to watch out against, that we're going to have to shut down or try to contain. There is no stop, and I won't even use the word stop, but we're going to have to do that. But they're going and and they're going to have to try to keep uh, Aaron Donald because Donald really has nobody on his other side. Von Miller left. There hasn't been anyone else that has been the one driving the quarterback to Donald to get help him out, and that's going to be a problem. Much like Brian Burns doesn't have that for the Panthers. You know, last year you had Hassan Reddick, and they were able to drive the quarterback against each other. But this year it's only one sided for both teams. So we'll see if we can try to somehow contain, maybe get a tight end. To, a chip off uh, of uh, uh, Donald and try to keep Donald in uh, check, or at least try to keep him as as least in the backfield as opportunities may present itself. So, overcome multiple injuries, got to step up the challenge. Now, last but not least, this is something too that you know Panther Nation. We we enjoy Steve Wilkes. We're glad to see he got the interim um, interim um, you know interim position of head coach we hope he does well the panthers have to play hard for steve wilkes that is the major problem is the panthers playing hard for steve wilkes if they do that this is the motivation they got to do because he has to do well even for dave tepper to decide if he's going to even be a viable candidate for the uh, for the panthers this year so playing hard for wilkes now this will be the panthers first time they're playing since Rule was let go last week uh, with this. Now, Wilkes is a Charlotte native, and he was a former assistant coach um, before. He went out to, you know, he got signed the uh, Arizona Cardinals. They took, they signed him to be their head coach. He got, a, they, they, they messed him up with that because they didn't even give the dude a chance. They gave him one year to try to head coach with Josh Rosen as the quarterback. I mean, come on. You have no weapons you give the man one year. What's he going to do with that? Who can? What can anybody do with that? Of course, then you see the, see the new regime come in the following year. The, uh, he he gets he gets out. They draft Kyler Murray. Clingsbury comes in from college. Did you know the rest is history with that? So glad to have him back because the man has uh, so much to really gain, and the play, players really they really can get rally behind. Him, even with all this talk, because Panther Nation, I ain't even bring that up. The um, there's been some trade talk up the last few weeks or the last few days about Christian McCaffrey. Now, what are the Panthers' direction are they going to do? Because they've been uh, they've been kind of actively, but not actively shop, uh, shopping Christian McCaffrey, looking to try to get a, uh, a first round pick or maybe if not multiple picks for him. Now that's their that's their been their guy. Now I'm not saying I'm against that, but if you're going to try it, and and the good news we did hear is earlier on NFL game day we did hear that the Panthers said we're not going to have a full fire sale. We're not going to shop everybody. So it looks like Burns, DJ Moore, Derek Brown, all those guys are safe, which is good because you got to have build pieces. Plus you got to give Wills a chance. You trade all these away. What chance is the Panthers going to have to play hard for Wilkes when he has no pieces to go? That's like trying to want somebody to make a cake, to eat a cake, but you ain't got the eggs, you ain't got the mix. All you got is the butter and the milk. What you going to do with that? Absolutely nothing. You can't make it. How, how are you going to make a cake with the missing ingredients? So th there still talks about that. Could he be going? Who are they looking for? We'll see. But they do need to go. Uh, and Wilkes has had, this year he will have at least 12 weeks to try to build some sort of foundation with the Panthers. That's not a whole lot of time. That's absurd to think that. But he's going to try because he does have some relationship. And even some of the players spoke out early in the season of how well they connected with him. But he is. This is his hometown team. He well, he had success here back when he was with the Panthers. Like I said, from 2012 to 2017. So we look to see they have to play hard against him in order to do and play hard for him and and against this Rams team. Is it out of the realm of possibility that the Ram that the Panthers can beat the Rams? Well, like I said before, they their teams both offensive sputter. Their defenses is going to be a defensive game, low scoring game. I'm going to go ahead and call it. I'm going to give it a twenty two. I'll say thirteen score is going to be my prediction. Twenty thirteen. 
And I'm going to say that, I'm going to unfortunately say that the Rams, I think the Rams are going to win. I, my heart says I would love the Panthers, but my head's going to say the Rams. But it's going to be a low scoring affair, 20 to 13 is going to be my prediction. So, with enough being said, Panther Nation, I will get back to you. Uh, we're going to take the, to the, we're going to go into the second part of the video, which will be the aftermath of the game. Uh, thanks for joining me so far for this, and this is Bill Mack. We are going to hit a pause here on this, and I will get back to you as soon as the game is over with and give you my thoughts and the results of the Week 6 matchup between the Carolina Panthers and the LA Rams. So, Bill Mack will be right back in just a bit. So, hang on tight. What is up, Panther Nation? Bill Mike here with another edition of the Panther Prowl. As we have come to the end of regulation, we are at the end of the game. And this is the second part uh, of the video, the review section of this video. As we have just uh, gone final here as the Panthers took on the uh, LA Rams in what would be a barn burner, if you really believe that. Um, we will look at the final score here first, and then we'll go get into a little bit of it. So, of course, the final here, as you as you can all tell, is a the Rams pick up their um, their third win win of the season to, to pull even at three and three. The Panthers drop another heartbreaker to come down to one and five through six weeks of the season, and we'll give you a little bit of insight and review of uh, what happened in this game. Now, as I had stated earlier, there were a few notes and things. I'll give you tidbits over here of what has happened in, in the game. Um, the Panthers, of course, we they did enter the game, uh, you know, not knowing uh, how they were going to, not knowing, as especially as fan, Panther fans, knowing how the Panthers were going to play, what they were going to do, how were they going to react. This was Steve Wilkes. Uh, you know, interim co head coaching uh, debut with the Panthers. So how were they going to play for him today? What was going to be different? What changes was he going to implement? Was the offense going to look different? Was the defense going to keep doing what they were doing? Well, as we see here, and to give you some tidbits here about the game, uh, injury-wise, we did have a few injuries here. As um, First off, P.J. Walker ended, ended up going into concussion protocol. Uh, he was hit in the second half by Jalen Ramsey on a blitz, and he was sent to the tent. He did go through protocol, uh, concussion protocol, was not allowed to go back into the game as these newer rules were implemented. However, and that opened the door for Jacob Eason, who was signed a couple of weeks ago off the Buffalo Bills uh, practice squad. Now, while P.J. did go into concussion protocol, he did pass. Uh, however, he did leave with a neck injury. So will he be the starter next week is the question. Will Baker be able to come back, or will Jacob Eason be the fifth Panthers quarterback as in six weeks or seven weeks should that happen, which is really, I've never heard of that before, going through five quarterbacks in uh, – in, in six weeks in six in seven weeks time that's that's a lot that really just shows you the it seems like the looming doom and gloom over the Panthers this season uh, CJ uh, Walt, CJ Henderson has had entered concussion protocol as well as he had gotten a hit and linebacker Corey Littleton of course had a groin injury and he was out for the rest of the game now we look at the first stat uh, we, we talk about the first half stats here of course uh, we looked at Matthew Stafford we had a lot going on here the game was relatively close uh, in the first few you know the first few uh, first actually the first half of the game was pretty much a very tamed game as as we went in the halftime it was a 10 to 7 score Panthers were actually up in this game uh, the, the first on the, the first half only showed three different scoring drives. Of course, Eddie Panera hit a 42-yard field goal that lasted 12 plays and 51 yards. Now, what we looked at is that the Panthers actually had a great start to time of possession in the first half. It looked like maybe the woes of them losing in the in the time of possession battle would kind of end. Now, we also had it. So we had uh, Eddie Panera hit a 42-yard field goal. 
Uh, Matthew Stafford did get on the board as he passed to uh, Allen Robinson, which was one that they wanted to come into the game because we'd seen, um, you know, Cooper Cup getting, you know, the majority of the receptions and, and things because he basically leads the NFL in all those categories. But we did see Allen Robinson get in there and actually get a, um, get a touchdown pass from uh, Matthew Stafford. Also, while in the second quarter as well, Dante Jackson – um, it's the ball is deflected. It basically falls in Dante's hands. He takes the ball on a pick six, a 30 yard interception return uh, to, to make to take the Panthers at a 10 to seven halftime uh, lead. 10 seven now. Panthers leading 10 seven. Um, third quarter, really, there was not a lot of scoring, which we did not expect. I was a little bit off. I projected a 20 to 13 score. The score was actually, as you saw, 24 to 10. Very close to what I had picked. Um, didn't have much scoring other than um, the Rams did get a, a field goal and a couple touchdowns. A field goal in the third quarter, and uh, Ben Skoronek uh, Skor Skor uh, got a 17-yard TD run uh, uh, to give the uh, it put the um, Rams up as the field goal from Matt Gay had tied the game. And Harold uh, Daryl Henderson didn't have a lot of run in uh, this this game here. Only had just a few yardage, but he did get a two yard touchdown run, which it took a five minute drive, which at the uh, eight fifteen minute mark, which put the uh, Rams up ahead and for good and sealed the deal with them. Now total yards wise, of course the Rams did uh, outmaneuver the Panthers. Panthers actually score. Did only got 203 total yards uh, for this game. Panthers ended up losing time of, con, um, of possession as we look at the total differences from 11 minutes in the first half and 11 and and only and being outscored in time of possession, they ended up with only 22 minutes. The Rams 37.05, with the Rams getting at least 22 first downs compared to the Panthers, only eight first downs all the way. Now we look at some scoring here as we will try and uh, bring this up to you on the board here. We'll go through our uh, breakdown here. And let me see. Oops, and I did not do that. Let me I'll switch that off. Now, actually, I'm going to add that. I hate to put, put it in there, but we're going to uh, we're gonna add it in. Let's see. Of course. Now... Here we go. I got to put old good old Bill here. Let's see. Where is my profile? Where's my picture? There we go. Yeah. So and we got the name. There we go. Now we let's let's take a breakdown of this here of the stats of the game. P.J. Walker was ten of sixteen for sixty yards, uh, and most of it was ju just juke passes to Christian McCaffrey. And and we always know there's the I don't I don't know right off what the record is for Christian, but I know that if he gets like double digits of both combined, like over twenty, the Panthers usually lose. That means they're relying way too much on him. And Wilkes, I will say this about the game. There was a there was a questionable call at the beginning of the game where they could have used the flag, but they didn't do it. Uh, and then, you know, there was also um his his game plan really wasn't much different than what it was for rule to, to, to be honest with you and that means that's that's false i would blame solely with that with mcadoo mcadoo didn't try to change it up because what were they doing game plan go to christian go to christian go to christian exactly what they did as you saw now we look at the first downs here the panthers ended up having only five passing first downs pj wasn't passing the ball deep he would just throw it to mccaffrey let mccaffrey run try to do little things with dj but they apparently they either did not trust him to go deep at all, he didn't. Now he didn't turn the ball over. He didn't have any um, interceptions or anything, but he didn't have no touch, no touchdowns. He just was not able to get the um, ball to you know was not able to get the ball. They weren't calling plays for him doing all he was doing is hitting the check downs with Christian or just letting Christian do the plays. Now rushing wise, of course, we see that they really didn't have a three rushing first down. Neither team. Did well with rushing. Panthers on third downs, of course. We said, what was the one of the points? They had to do better with third down efficiency. What did your offense get? Two of ten compared to the Rams at 50% of six and 12. The Panthers ran almost 20 plays less. Like I said, out, out got outscored with yardage by 157. 
total drives, same amount of drives. Uh, the yards per play, uh, the Rams were at least a good full yard over them. Passing-wise, um, we see that uh, Stafford had 200, 253 total yards on 26 of 33 passes, which means he only missed seven passes. But as deceiving because he really didn't go deep too much. He did get a touchdown and that pick six uh, by um, Dante Jackson. Now, like I said, Don, uh, uh, Henderson ended up having 12 carries of 43 yards. He did get that touchdown in the fourth quarter to kind of put it away. Christian, of course, had 13 carries for 69 yards, and he had seven receptions for 89 yards, which put him, put him right about 158 yards, uh, total yards of scrimmage on 20, uh, 20 total uh, touches. So that's never good. Whenever you have 20 touches, that's not a good day. And they kept passing to him. And seven receptions seemed like he had a whole lot more than that. We go down to red zone uh, opportunities. The Panthers only had one opportunity all game long to get into the red zone. Didn't do of it. The, however, the Rams, once they get in the red zone, 75% got in there three or four times. They were even penalized twice as much as the Panthers. That didn't matter. Of course, like I said, each one threw it. Inter, uh, there was an interception thrown by the Panthers, but that wasn't uh, that wasn't PJ. PJ had to go out with a pro concussion protocol, which brought in Jacob Eason. Which, like I said in the beginning of the, uh, the video, was the fact that he came off the practice squad of the Buffalo Bills and was re-signed a couple weeks ago. Comes in, which is hard to ask him for because, like I said, you know he's tried to take rips what he could, but there, you know it's hard to ask somebody to come in in two weeks' time and be a fifth string or a quarterback and try to do something. But um, they ended up basically, um, he did throw an interception, but it was off of a deflection uh, that that happened. And like I said, Panthers were out in the time of possession. Now, we'll go to a little breakdown here in the, uh, in the, stat, in the stats wise here with the, um, Eason was, of course, breaking it down. Eason was uh, three of five. You know, he was efficient, 59 yards, but he did, like I said, the deflection with the interception caused them that drive to die down. Uh, Stafford was on point, 90, a 96.1 rating um, in the game. Rushing, like I said, they only got 93 yards. Didn't even get 100 yards rushing. Uh, Panthers did. And, and, and uh, the uh, Rams fortunately did. Uh, got 111 total to yards from all of their right uh, contributors with two rushing touchdowns touch on there. Receiving wise, McCaffrey led the way. Ian Thomas did have some problems in a couple of catches. Uh, DJ only got three catches on and Shuba got one. Seven. Now let's see, Panther Nation. We're going to have to show you this here. I thought it was real funny if we season. didn't um if we didn't show this, but I'm going to show you now. Mind you, the, you don't see Robbie Anderson's name up there. Well, there's a reason for that. Robbie really didn't get targets much. Robbie really didn't get too much going on for himself. So he was seen arguing at two different times: once in the first half, once in the second half, at wide receivers coach. Um, I think his last name is Daly. Uh, he was the he was the he's the Panthers wide receivers coach, and Robbie was upset whether it was because of the game plan and him not receiving anything or what. But it has been known for a while that Robbie the Panthers are trying to openly shop Robbie to get him out of town. Robbie pulled this stunt last year. Seems like Robbie did all right the first year uh, he was here, but then last year and this year, not at all, not at all, nowhere near that. He just It's just probably a change of scenery will be best for him. So what we see ended up happening is this, and, and you are reading this as being right. You're seeing this. The Panthers coach, Steve Wilkes, ends up kicking Robbie Anderson out of the game, tells him, look, you can't stay here, but you got to get the blank out of here. That's <laughs> what he was telling him. So Robbie gets kicked out of the game, arguing with, the coach you just can't do that is, is he trying his best to do it i mean we don't know but let's see the little headline here it says that his off while his offense was struggling on the field steve wilkes threw out robbie anderson out of the game on sunday after he was in a heated argument with position coach joe daly joe daly was the wide receiver coach so he got into a shout match with him late in the first and then he opened the second half now forget this he was on he opened the second half Riding a bike, wearing a ball cap, and then in late in the third quarter, 
it, while the whole offense was sitting there on the sideline trying to talk a strategy, where was Robbie? Good old Roby, i.e., was over on the cooler sitting just chilling. Hey, man, I'm just here. That's all it was. They just His presence was here. So then we see later in the third quarter, after the Panthers were down 17-10, not just but one possession, but they hadn't had a first down since the first quarter, mind you. This tells you how badly they played. Anderson and Daly got into another exchange, and then this is when Wilkes come in. Wilkes says, nice, son, you got to leave. Nice, son, you got to hit the showers. Robbie, like, whoa, whoa, man, like, what? Robbie, go take a seat, sir. I, I don't even know if you'll even play anymore for the Panthers. Steve, Wilkes may either just take you and bench you a healthy scratch and keep you there the rest of the year or until you can get traded. Now, Anderson didn't have a catch on Sunday. It says he struggled for the second straight year. He only had 13 catches for 206 yards and says 75 of those were on a touchdown in the opener on the Browns from Baker. So, you know, he ain't doing much. 100, what, 200 and... 25, 135, 30 yards total. Yeah, shows you what he's doing. But uh, it did. We we are like I mentioned before that there is someone within the SPN and it's known through the Panther circles that they are looking to shop Anderson. Now, Anderson isn't that his his contract isn't that bad. It's only five hundred seventy five thousand dollars the rest of the year. You know, but now what's going to happen is that bar that happen, of course, we see down here. They would take a $20 million dead cap hit across this year and next. And that's just what the Panthers would need. A $20 million cap hit this year and next if they were to ship, uh, if they were to ship good old Roby Anderson out of it. As we see here, you can see Robbie in the back. Not too happy, not too pleased with what's going on. He walks down the side and he isn't happy at all. And he's just fussing, mad, everything else. And you see him walking by, yeah, what you doing, son? What you doing? You know, just the way it was. But I mean, hey, you guess what's got to happen, Ruby? You, you're going to hit the shower, son. Not today. So, anyways, Panther Nation, as we see here, Ruby gets kicked out of the game. Now we come back. Okay, here we go. Now, let's look at the team stats here before we wind this video because it's just the stats. That's usually what we wind up with. We're seeing we know what happened and we know the uh, what everything basically looked like. Of course, and let's break it down here. Stafford, like I said, 253, one touchdown, one interception. Daryl Henderson did 12 carries for 43 yards. There was not a lot. The Panthers' defense didn't do a bad job. I mean, you look at these stats to run, to pass a little bit, yeah, sure, whatever, you know. But, I mean, you, if you look at the the the, um, the output it here, it's among a bunch of three different players. Only Henderson, uh, you know, as we see down here. Of course, Cooper Cup, he was the man with the plan. We knew it before. Allen Robinson did join the crowd. Got five catches for 63 yards. He got the long touchdown for them. And this again was, was, was early on in, in, I think it was in the first half, I believe. But needless to say, Tyler Hebe, which done rough for me in, in fantasy, I might add. One catch for seven yards. That was it. Man wasn't in the plans for the day. Wish I had known that. He had 10 straight games of... Ten fans, double digit fantasy point lead. Uh, Pan, uh, the Rams defense. Uh, we see here Marquise Copeland had a sack on six tackles, two solo. Jalen Ramsey, of course, had a sack. That was off the blitz, mind you. He had two tackles for loss, however, with th you know three total tackles. Um, and and pretty much Panther Nation. That was it with the defense. Like I said, it was a ten point game. It was uh, it, the Panthers' offense were their own worst enemies. And how do we say we remember Panther Nation? It's twenty four ten. Had I even called this, I said the Panthers yet again are probably going to end up their defense scoring, and that will be their touchdown. And sure enough, second half, Dante Jackson pick six, thirty yards return for a touchdown on that defense yet again. So a take good a good takeaway for the Panthers after all the times they've had missed out. But it's just a bad look with the Panthers, like I said, drawing one and five, oh and two. Of course, Panera did when we needed him to kick the field goal an extra point, the fella done it for us. Congrats to him. 
Uh, you know, one of one on both of them with four points. We knew he could do it. Of course, Hecker, of all, as always, averaging 51 yards with th all three, three of the seven inside the 20. Longest was 68. Can't ask for nothing better than our, than our punter. So when our punter and our field goal kicker are your two MVPs of your team, that's a problem, Panther Nation. That's what we say. But as we come to it, I mean, it was just a a disastrous part of a game. I mean, I can't just begin to tell you just how much I rev uh, just reviled in this game and the Panthers to end up uh, only getting 10 points, uh, one of the lowest outputs that they had. The, the offense looked really not much different than what Rule ran it, which that's accredited to uh, to to McAdoo. McAdoo did it. McAdoo done it. So, drop the Panthers straight. It's another loss. Team scores more than 17 points. They lose. That's a, The record keeps rolling. Don't matter who it's with. Still another straight loss here, which I was told by my, my, by my best friend Lamont that when I came back in tonight that the Panthers were now these had the second longest stretch of straight losses when a opponent of theirs has scored more than 17 points over. So they're now in second place with that. They've got a ways to go because it's 40-plus, I think, with the who, Raiders? Was it Raiders? No, Seahawks. Seahawks. Seahawks had 40 what? 40. Seahawks had 40 straight losses by 17 points after when the opponent scored 17 or more. So we'll, we'll get there. You know, it might take another season. We'll get there, though. Don't rest assured the Panthers are going to get that. The Panthers are going to get that record. So, you know, if, if we're going to get a record, it's not going to be nothing positive, Panther Nation. Trust me. But that's, you know, it is what it is. If you come to expect it, like I said, Panther Nation, in the first part of the video I did, if we thought, my heart said I wanted the Panthers to win, my head, though, one out and in, said that the Rams were going to win. I was close. I thought it was going to be 20 to 13, but it was 24 10. So, not too bad for a guess here of a game that was just a slot fest here. Both teams look rough. Both teams' defense, they did pretty decent, but we did see a bunch of people get hurt. We did see um, our, our fourth string quarterback go down, concussion protocol. Luckily, he passed it, but he does have a neck injury. What does that say about next week? We'll have to wait and see. Will Jacob Eason get a start? Will Baker feel enough to okay to come back, which I'm kind of worried they'll rush him back and he ain't ready to come back yet and try to run out there and get hurt. But, you know, that's what they're going to do anyways. What does it matter? We're on we're on the road to the number one pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, Panther Nation. That's what we've got to look forward to. So, and pardon me for that loud racket. you got a bunch of idiots that will come through this road here to make that think that's cool to have their... Um, vehicle sound like that but anyways panther nation um thanks for, if you've enjoyed the video as always like and subscribe uh drop a comment in the comment box please if you have any questions uh as always you see my social media uh, my socials uh above my uh profile uh head on the video uh subscribe to those share the video i like it like i said sub to my channel if you hadn't subbed to it um, I enjoy doing the videos. I always enjoy talking about the Panthers. A lot of Panthers, you know, I'm very enjoyable. I'll credit the, I do want to credit the um, ESPN for the video, and I want to credit ESPN for some for some of the stats and things in which I did. So much much credit to them. I will put it in the description as well. If you want to read the full story, like I said, go to ESPN.com forward slash Panthers. You should be able to find that somewhere in the new section of their. Uh, uh, their page on, on ESPN. So, until next time, Panther Nation, I'm winding down here. Bill Mack with another edition of the Panther Prowl. I am not even sure who the Panthers are even playing. Let me, uh, I'll look that up for you real quick, Panther Nation. I hate not to not to let you know who we can get a joy in and, and play in next. Let me see here who we got playing next. I just can't wait schedule-wise. Let's see if I can find it. I mean, it gets no better than that. I mean, you know, it's a joy. Just, I think it's Tampa Bay, if I'm not mistaken. I could have swore it was Tampa Bay after L.A. I'll double-check that. Let me look that up real quick so I can try to find it. Panthers. I think it is L.A., though, if I'm not mistaken. Schedule. Here we go. Yes, it is the Buccaneers. Oh, boy, can't wait. A week away. 
they, uh, we're playing against Tampa Bay at home. So another place where we don't do well is at home. We just we can't win at home, but we can't win on the road either. So we suck. We just do it evenly. It's only fair, Panther Nation. If you're going to suck at home, might as well suck on the road too. Just suck all around. That's the way you do. I mean, that's the only even thing we can do. Um, I didn't see Darn. I didn't really see Darn. I don't even think I called our, uh, our, um, uh, Aaron Donald's name. I don't even think the dude even had anything. What did that? What did Donald have? Huh? I think he got two tackles. Donald had two. I mean, uh, Don, I keep saying Donald. Donald had. Aaron Donald had only two tackles. Hey, well, heads up for that. Whether it's crappy play or whether Iquano actually had him, um, you know, kept him in check. Either way, that's great. Not great. In the second um, half. Huh? Not in the second half. What do you mean second half? Second half field run over the board. But I'm saying Darnold didn't – was Darnold wasn't having no pressure on him, was he? Second down and seven. Let's it go. So he did have one two tackles. Just two tackles, about two tackles, but he had a lot of push. Oh, I, I, as long as he didn't sack – was it him that sacked um, P.J. or um, – No, that was Ramsey. Ramsey, okay. So – they did their job with, Don with Donald. I mentioned that. They didn't do the job, which I asked earlier in the video about which, what were some of the tips, and one of them was Cup. You couldn't do, you just, you can't stop Cup. He had 77, uh, he had 80 yards and seven receptions, but he didn't, so he didn't get 100 yards, and he didn't get a touchdown. So, defense did the little tidbits. It just, they just could not bring the game together. Uh, doggone PJ was throwing shot shots to Christian, you know, like they're playing catch in the backyard. Christian had to run around. He got body slammed. I swear I thought he was auditioning the WWE. Got body slammed. Didn't call the penalty on one of them where he got suplexed backwards. And then I think Ramsey hit him one time and picked him up and cleared him off the ground and, and, and hit him. Poor little C-Mac like that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what happened to him. But anyways, Panther Nation... Uh, I'm going to close the video out for now. I hope you folks enjoyed it. As always, as I love doing these videos, as our Carolina Panthers go next week, go into week seven to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home. They will host them. Uh, Tom Brady, we've seen what that cluster as the uh, Buccaneers lost today to the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers uh, 2018. We'll see how uh, Tom Brady reacts to that. Of course, he'll probably be pissed off and probably throw for 400 yards on us but you know that's what it is i mean you know things are like they are but anyway panther nation thank you once again for um and for joining us listen to the video like i said just follow my socials like and subscribe share do all that until next time this is bill mack with uh panther prowl saying keep pounding <laughs>